Well, hello once, uh, hello once again, everybody. This is Kevin Shortell, and I'm joined by uh, Mr. Eddie Speed. Eddie, how you doing? I'm great. How are you guys today? I'm um, doing doing really good, and uh, we've got a really good story here too with uh, Brooks Johnson. You know, we've uh, both you and I have got to meet Brooks over the last couple of years, and and really have seen him evolve and in investing in this business. And and it's always an interesting thing, Eddie, when you when you see someone like this come on, and and how they start to really get the full flavor for the business, and their entire investment model seems to to change, and they start to see opportunities where they didn't see him before, and that definitely happened with Brooks, right? Yeah, it's 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 I think the funnest part of what we get to do. Um, you know, uh, I think we get to take really smart people and give them specialized knowledge about something that we've been studying a long time, right? Brooks is a smart guy, and when we first met him, we told we, we told him, "Hey, we're going to make you a deal architect, right? We're going to we're going to show you 20 different ways you could turn a deal upside down." And, and you know, when somebody doesn't know you that well or they haven't seen it, they don't even know what that means. They're like, well, what's that look like or how does that work? And and I can remember kind of the evolution with Brooks. Brooks is um, Brooks is real good friends and a neighbor with a, a longer-term uh, note uh, note school guy, uh, a guy named Tim Siebling. Yep. They both live yep. over in North Carolina. And so Tim was kind of pretty far down the road and doing some pretty creative stuff and they were so then he kind of suggested Brooks try this and and uh, of course you know you got to remember Brooks has been with us a couple of years and he's taken a pretty deep dive so he to get to the point that you see this this case study today it wasn't his first day it wasn't his first day on roller skates <laughs> that, he, that he could skate that good but um, but it's where you it's where he started I think it's where a lot of you guys start and um, and and I I would say that th this is an example. It's not it's not the only way you could have done this deal. You could have done it several different ways. But this is an example of how to take a good deal and turn it into an extraordinary deal. Kevin, uh, let's talk about what happened as a result of him doing this. Yeah, he submitted this to our um, annual case study uh, competition, which is always great. We we have that. Uh, in November every year and uh, uh, they get to speak at the the Note Expo of course which is coming up again this year and uh, just a great event great time and and he was the winner last year 2016 on the performing note case study and uh, it just it was one of these really just well researched he did proper due diligence had everything in place and it just went really really seamless for him but it was a nice looking note as well you know it all starts with what is the what is the note and what's it backed by, right? We don't buy just notes, and I know in class we have a tendency, of course, just to say we're in the note business, and you hear people say the paper business, that sort of thing, but we always are buying notes that are secured, and they're secured by property, and that property has value. Now, this collateral property here was actually an income-producing property, so this was a duplex and the owner of the property was renting both sides of the duplex and when he looked at the numbers the rent superseded what's known as the debt service right the debt service being the payment that they were making on this loan and this was what we call a performing loan so they had uh, continued to make payments they were never uh, missed the payment anything like that so it had a very good track record with it something we called seasoning uh, in the business and uh, just backed by income which was a really good sign uh, and a really good selling point I should say for Brooks to to purchase this note valuation models uh, again we you know we have uh, and I think Eddie you and I have done uh, trainings and, and other uh, webinars where we've talked about BPOs and and how they really aren't looking at the uh, income approach and that sort of thing and that's a whole bigger deep top topic there but this was backed by a solid property with a BPO of fifty thousand dollars and if you looked at this property from an income approach there was more value in this property than just fifty thousand bucks but even if it was just worth the fifty thousand uh, dollars he got a, a, a really good transaction within this because with the rent coming in there's a very very low probability that this person won't continue to make the payments on on the loan the other thing here Eddie was this was clear title so as a part of our due diligence course, we're looking at taxes and, and title, and, and as you always say, those are two of the big potential deal killers, right? And uh, those were all clear on this one, and, and um, 
you know, it, it, it's something that you verify, something that you look up, and something that is absolutely a part of the due diligence process here. And the note itself that was backed by that property, the loan was $62,997. It was at basically an 8% interest rate, 7.9. The term was 224 months. And you can see the monthly payments there is only $538 a month. And as I said, the rent's coming in. Uh, exceed that amount of money and uh, Eddie you've had us on this directive for quite some time which is teaching people how to make an annual income in seven to eight months on a part-time basis but also being able to utilize and build up those retirement accounts for the rest of the year and uh, Brooks is certainly one of those guys that has taken that advice as well because he didn't purchase through a company he purchased this through his IRA and he was able to purchase this note at a good price of $42,000. So that was his price for the note. So mathematically, uh, he's in pretty good position, right, Eddie? Yeah, he really is. And, and in this case, Kevin, you, you, you talked about the, the BPO. The, the, the BPO on this case uh, was lower than what the property sold for. And, and you've got to remember this. We're ordering a BPO. The realtor doing the BPO is not making a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we ordered through a national company. The the realtor themselves that are doing doing the BPO probably are getting sixty bucks. Yeah, sixty seven. And they're bucks. just running cash comps, and that's all there would be because there wouldn't be finance sales for fifty grand, right? Mm -hmm. They're just mm -hmm. running cash comps, and those are as is properties in MLS. So it's probably not really comparable to a house that's now brought up to a habitable standard and now being and is occupied with tenants. And so you know, if you sold it as a turnkey property, it naturally would bring more money than just throwing it in MLS as a vacant kind of a bank foreclosure property, right? right. So there, when you do a deep dive, the customer didn't overpay for the property. It's just that the, the, the BPO, which is the industry standard, and we're going to give you what the industry, that's how it works, right? right? But we know that property is worth more than that. But he got to buy this note at an additional discount because of the low BPO, and that's why he paid forty-two thousand. That's right, and this also came with a pretty good track record. You know, sixteen monthly payments had been made on time, proper amount coming in, and and once again, you've had that extra. Uh, in this case, that extra sense of security where you know you've got tenants in there uh, making payments, so the owner has uh, the the capital to make sure that those uh, payments are made very very uh, seamlessly. So the yeah. seasoning here, the uh, 16 months, that's not a part of what Brooks bought. Bought. That's what had already been paid before Brooks purchased this this note. So it's a well seasoned note, and then Brooks is purchasing all those remaining payments. Yeah. So now the loan's amortized a little bit, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And now it's amortized down to the 62,997. So the day Brooks bought it, the the customer's loan had amortized down a little bit because of their 16. Uh, payment track record, which mm -hmm. then became another redeeming factor, right? Because the redeeming factor is they're proven they're going to pay on their mortgage because of the track record they've already been paying. Yeah, exactly. And then he's got the right to receive all those other 224 payments uh, that uh, are going to be paid uh, towards the future and to pay out this uh, entire loan. And uh, self-directed retirement account. Mm -hmm. had the right to receive those. Exactly. Yeah. So there's all his payments and the balance again as you said had dropped down to 62 because uh, once again I think most people understand this but these loans are all amortized right and and most of the payment is in the, especially in the beginning of a loan is going to go towards interest and very little principal on there but he was able to buy this at a healthy discount when you looked at the unpaid balance he's in this for 65 percent essentially of what the unpaid balance was on that uh, particular loan so his balance is here the discount is the 65 uh, percent and that's what Brooks's price is so when when he's doing his due diligence or running all his numbers these are some of the ratios you're looking at investment to value ratios and investment to loan balance ratios all these sorts of things are mechanisms that we pe teach people how to look at and it's not always a specific number many times it's 
the relationship between those numbers, and then of course Eddie, understanding that time value of, of money concept, uh, which uh, you've always had the unique way of uh, taking some complex topics and, and making them simple. Uh, so explain to us a little bit about this time value of money and what he might be able to do with this rather lengthy income stream that is well over 200 months. Well, let's let's just let's just say that the payment, Kevin, is 500 bucks. Let's just round it off to 500. I know it's 550 and change or whatever, but right. let's just for a conversation. Let's just say it's 500 bucks, okay? Mm -hmm. And 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 so, Kevin, if I said, well, 538 bucks, right? So so if I if I offered you to buy some payments on this note, would you rather have the payments that are due next year? Or that are going to be due 17 years from now. <laughs> right. I'd rather start collecting money next month, not wait uh, 10 years before I get a single payment. Sure. Okay. And so, if you invested a dollar today to get money in the future, you would want that money in the future to be a higher number, right? Exactly. Than if you invested a dollar today and are going to get it back in, say, six months, right? Right. So that means that cost. the amount you pay for the back payments on the note is not as much as you would pay for the front payments on the note. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And so that is, you know, that's understanding the logic in present value. I mean, we can, you know, when I, when I got in the note business in 1980, I was taught the note business by some crazy smart guys, okay? And I went to note trade shows in the late 80s and the early 90s and most of the guys that were up there teaching at that time were kind of the intellectuals and they were kind of like you know the deep studies the the, the PhD types right? right and they would say well what it is is it's present value of future dollars and I'm like who the hell can understand that just some guy in the street right I'm used I'm dealing with a customer trying to sell me a note right he, right. he don't know what you're talking about Mm -hmm. And so I have I had to learn to relate to things and that helped us down the road in learning how to train because I was accustomed to having to explain why your note is discounted to some guy selling me a note at a discount. Yeah, because right? they, they think it's worth the full full fair balance, right? Yeah. Exactly. And part of the sales technique is it has to be logical to them, right? right. It has to it has to make sense. So I, I practiced explaining these payment streams and when you get the money back and why money do way out in the future isn't as valuable. But in that, of course, we all know you take a financial calculator and you run numbers and to, and to really get good at this business, to do what Brooks did, you're going to have to be able to do that. But we just wanted to kind of, you know, make sure that we, you, you know, just leave it simple idea today that obviously payments due out in the future, you're not going to pay as much for them today. And right. Brooks understood that technique and it, and you're as you progress you're going to see why he really really knew how to maximize getting money out of this deal because of understanding that concept absolutely yeah like you said uh, um, because it's a lengthy income stream and those monthly payments are further out in time all of those have different value today which means that you could sell that entire income stream or any part of it and that's where this whole concept of, of partials comes into play and as you like to say partials are like pizza pies right everybody can relate to a to a pizza pie but the financial lesson in this of course what you're talking about is is if it costs you six dollars to make that pizza or you can buy that whole pizza for six dollars however you want to to think of it can you carve off enough pieces can you carve off enough slices on this so that half of the pizza pays for the other half in other words if you could carve off three slices at two dollars a slice well how much money now do you have in the other half of the pizza and of course the answer is nothing so these notes when you start to look at them in time we can slice off and sell to other investors any number of payments that financially make sense and that could be half of the note it could be five years of payments ten years of payments anything we can project out into uh, the future and that's really exactly what 
uh, he ended up doing, Brooks ended up doing on this particular deal. So he got a good, well-seasoned note, a good payment history coming in, and he decided, you know what, maybe I can just sell a part of this note, maybe enough of it, so I get all my money back, all my investment capital back, and I still own half of the pie, just like in this particular pizza, uh, pizza uh, picture in, on your uh, screen right there. So we color-coded this so everybody could follow along here where the uh, the original note itself is going to be in yellow, and that's the amount owed and the number of payments. And then Brooks's investment is going to be in green. So how much he invested, how many payments he's purchased, and then Brooks ended up selling a part of this income stream to another investor, and he's going to be represented in blue there. So we did that because what's coming up are several charts and graphs, so you can really visually see how this works, how logical it is uh, for all parties, and how it really truly is a win-win scenario between all of these three parties uh, involved here. So, Eddie, let's take a look at the uh, the income stream here. Again, we've got this $42,000 price, and what he did was he traded, if you will, $40,000, $42,000 today for the right to receive all of these monthly payments over time. Yeah, and remember, the customer owes about $63,000, but Brooks didn't pay $63,000. Brooks mm -hmm. paid $42,000, so he's earning essentially the 7.9 percent interest that the note pays plus he's earning that twenty thousand dollars discount Kevin which makes his annual interest on his investment higher than the interest rate on the note right that's how the discount paper business works all right, right. now that Absolutely. has nothing to do with what the investor that buys the partial may get okay exactly. so, so it's whatever you agree to with the investor on the partial the interest rate on the note or the interest on your your yield on your investment that has nothing to do with it. So you'll see here in a minute that that Brooks didn't let the passive investors return be influenced by his price or his return or even the interest rate on the note. So um, Brooks got started here and 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 bought it for 42 and then and then he collected, uh, what was that, four payments, Kevin? I believe he collected four payments. I believe that's right. So he bought it, put it with a servicer, and he collected four payments. My, my wife does this a lot. She'll buy a loan. She won't sell a partial yet. She'll just buy it, and and we we kind of use an expression around here, we bake it, right? We just It just means that you get, you get all the servicing transfer squared away and stuff. It doesn't mean you have to do it this way. We have lots of students that flip notes, lots. But uh, when you get your machine rolling a little more, it's a, le a little less moving parts if you got a little bit of money and you can fund it up front and then you just recoup it later. And so it's it's kind of a, 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 a kind of a stage two of where some people some people end up. So after he collected the four payments, he sells uh, what was it, a hundred payments? Hundred months. He a hundred payments on this note. Now, Kevin, guess how much he sold that for? <laughs> I clicked a button too quick there for you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. But, yeah, he calculated back on this and just said, look, if I want to recoup my initial investment of $42,000, how many payments would I need to sell at a particular yield? And just ran the math backwards that came up with, well, I could sell 100 monthly payments for $42,000, which is really everything that he had uh, in that uh, that that note from the initial investment, which means the good news is, after he sells the he collects four payments, he sells a hundred payments. The investor that 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 paid forty two thousand for the hundred payments, Kevin, mm -hmm. they're going to collect back about fifty four thousand fifty three eight sixty one. Mm -hmm. And if you run it through your calculator, the interest on their investment per year, what, what you and I refer to as the yield, same thing, it's just interest on their investment, mm -hmm. they're going to earn a tick over 6%. Here's the deal, Kevin. Somebody goes, oh, well, 6%, I, I don't know. Let me tell you something. That's about eight times more they're going to earn at the bank. You, you okay? got that right. It lets them sleep at night better than being in the stock market. And yep. Brooks is on the back side of this deal, and Brooks is going to make sure that everything works out because he's owed a lot of money on the back of this deal. So that was a winner for a passive investor and Brooks now owns the back 10 years of this note. 
So as nope. long as this borrower continues to pay, Brooks, and again, Brooks did this the right way. He had been working with this investor already, showing the opportunity, exposing him to how the business works. So when Brooks purchased this, uh, you're right, he just wanted to season it up a little bit, have a little track record with it. Then he went to his investor and said, here's the opportunity. Where else can you get a 6% return secured? And of course, as you said, he's got Brooks there to, to, to stay involved and make all this sort of Th uh, this easy for him because Brooks has a financial interest in that back end as well. But Brooks is doing pretty good also, right? He has all it's, of his investment capital back uh, in this deal. It's funny, Kevin. Like people will ask us all the time because we kind of look at it and think somewhat like, "Where's the yellow pages for investors? Right? How do I find this guy to buy a partial?" And and uh, let me let me say that we as we progress with people in training we spend probably an equal amount of time on that that we do of how to run the math right mm -hmm. because we get that other part is is an essential part and there's not a yellow pages that you go find a man but there is a process and and you develop that investor and you and you with your knowledge and your confidence in your knowledge the investor becomes comfortable that's just really how it works Right. Exactly. I know a whole lot of people that would buy the back side of an a, a front end of a note, Kevin, if you and I own the back side of it, right? Because mm -hmm. they sure. think that they think that we know what we're doing and their money is uh you know, we're they're gonna get all their money before we get any of our money left. And and so that's the idea is progressing somebody not only with just the technical knowledge of how to run the numbers, but really just a confidence in how to do the business and we put a funny little punchline on this one here because we showed you the investor's money he's going to collect back over time. Mm -hmm. Then we showed you the money that Brooks is going to collect back over time, 64633 uh, uh, 64, mm -hmm. And then we said, okay, well, what's the return on Brooks's investment now? And I just said, it is the best deal when you don't need a calculator. Exactly. Okay, it's enough. Exactly. <laughs> And that becomes that passive uh, income and uh, the old uh, mailbox money, as we, as we used to call that. And Brooks also smart enough because he's been trained, right? I mean, we showed him how to do everything correctly. And a part of this process, too, is you want to use third-party servicers. You want to have the money professionally collected, accounted for. Uh, it adds credibility. It, it, it adds value to this when you're working with other investors, let alone in your own business. You want to outsource certain things anyhow, and loan servicing today is certainly one of those things that you want to outsource. It's inexpensive. They collect the monthly payments. They take a small fee in return for that, but everything is accounted for. You can look at your whole portfolio online anytime. The payments come in. The payments then are distributed to the note owner. So these loan servicing companies have instructions. So when Brooks sold a, this 100 months to the other investor, the loan servicing companies were given, or company was given instructions that says, okay, now we're going to flip the toggle this way so that those monthly payments now go to uh, this other investor. And then after the 100 months, the instructions say, now we're going to switch that toggle back, and then Brooks is going to receive those, uh, those payments. And so everything is professionally serviced uh, behind the scenes. And I think if you're working with investors today, they not only want that, but they would expect uh, that. They don't want to see notes that are self-service, especially if the payments include the taxes and insurance escrow money, right? You've got to do this. You want to make professional business as, or money, as we always say, you have to work and act as a professional. Kevin, let me say this. We sell lots of notes to, pa <clears throat> to passive investors. You know, my, and my wife and I, that's a big part of our retirement plan, right? We do this model that you're seeing today a lot, okay? In different retirement accounts and you know 401k and IRA and our kids IRAs and other you know uh, executives on the our team so we we help fuel a, a lot of this transaction mm -hmm. and we would not sell a note to a private investor like Brooks sold this note unless it was third-party serviced so it's not like it's not just a good idea we think it's essential right yeah Right, and that makes it easy too, and that it makes it easy on on all parties. Accountability, everything is in place, and the investors 
who are attracted to this in this capacity, just the same as the investor that was working with Brooks on this one, they want it all to be easy. They want it to be taken care of. They want it all to be handled. These are not active investors. These are investors who are looking to place capital to work for them because it's not working in other places, right? You're getting a piddly return with treasury bills and CDs and bank rates and those sorts of things. And you're right, stock market's a scary proposition for, for a lot of people. And to make this kind of return when it can be set up where everything is very, very streamlined to the point where it's almost um, – seamless, it's a very, very attractive opportunity for these investors. So you need to do it right. You need to set their expectations uh, properly uh, for that. And that's how it starts to grow. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. I thought, go back. Go back. When I, I got, this is too funny. I got to tell you this. It, okay. it popped in my head. Okay. One more? No, you're good. Okay. So if, the, if, if that investor's first name is passive, his last name is easy. <laughs> it, it, it ain't. It's not passive. Difficult. Mm -hmm. All right. He's it, it, that that they go together, and yeah. that's what you got to understand. Is that's why the guy's willing to live with a six percent return. Is he didn't find the deal. He didn't carve the deal up. He didn't go to note school. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to learn how to be a deal architect. He just wanted to go find an alternative investment. Mm -hmm. So if his first name's passive, his last name's got to be easy. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They they go hand in hand. No question. Yeah. Very good. So the note itself, unpaid balance, $62,997 and had 224 payments. And then Brooks invested the $42,000 into this and he bought all of those remaining payments, right? Then he sold for $42,000 the next 100 payments. So again, we like to use these nice charts and graphs, and, and, and uh, Eddie, as long as you've been teaching this, I, I, I've heard you say it several times, no better way to teach the partials than when you created this idea of putting it up on a slide like this and showing everybody exactly how that works over time. Why don't you guide us through that one? Well, it, it does. So what you're looking at here is a picture of the loan amortization. It doesn't show the interest. It shows the principal and as the principal lobs off. So if you can look at, take this picture, Kevin, and just look at the, the orange line for a minute and just take half of the term of the note, which is, what is that, a hundred and... 112, something like that. 110 months, something like that. Mm -hmm. If you just zeroed up, the, the, the first half of that note, the principal's going off pretty slowly. The last half of that note, the principal's diving off of there, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Because the payment's the same, but the application to principal and interest is much different on the first half than the second half. So, Kevin, think about this. Th think, think along with me for a second. What if I bought the whole cash flow and I sold the heaviest interest payment to another investor and I kept the principal? Okay. Now, the reason that's important is because when that loan pays off, Kevin, it's going to pay off at the principal amount plus any interest that's accrued. Right. So, so the interest going off slowly is way to my advantage and if I sold the front end of the note and I'm going to start collecting payments down the road because I get a loan back with a lot of principal and, of course, interest still owed. So we color-coded it here. We got the, what the borrower owes. Uh, we've got Brooks's investment in the green, and we got the partial in blue. So the partial investor, as you can see, he's bought a hundred months. So his investment's going to pay back pretty quickly. Hundred months, that's eight and a half years, and then Brooks gets the note back. So, so what happens is at the end of a hundred months, he, remember he's already collected four payments. Brooks get the note, gets the note back, and he's going to owe. I think one more click, Kevin, on the arrow there. Yeah. He's going to owe for about four, he's going to be owed about forty five thousand dollars plus interest. Okay, now people say, but he had to wait for the money. Okay, well, how much does he have invested in it? Right. right. Okay. I mean, let's be fair about it. If you're trying to do your retirement account and you look at Brooks and you know he's, you, you know he's he's not a millennial, right? He's he's older than that, and I don't know how old Brooks is, but he's, I'd guess, late forties, early fifties, maybe or something like that. Hey, I mean. I think that's probably right. If that's true, then that's just about, boy, about 100 months from now be about a prime time to get that note back and be owed 10 years worth of payments with nothing invested. 
Yeah, and if you don't have, if you have nothing invested, and, and you just kind of did the simple math, which I'm sure some some of you are probably doing in your head right now. I mean, how many of these deals could you do where you have built up a lot of this back end? And you're right, down the road, uh, when these things start to to pay off or the payments uh, start to come in, it's a whole different ball game uh, when it comes to uh, retirement. Kevin, let me make a point. Okay, we're going to have some people. That are that are with us here on the training, and they're going to know, yeah, but this, and yeah, but this, and let me just say something. I'm fairly sure that most every yeah, but you have, we have an answer to. Okay, <laughs> as they say in Texas, this ain't our first rodeo. Right. Okay. And I understand uh, all kind of variables and how to do this, and so Brooks did this with with more background and more information than is practical for us to get into just on this webinar, okay? Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's a pretty advanced note school guy at this point. But, but when you start down the road with us and do this, we're going to be uh, very detailed in understanding strategic decisions and the effect of that strategic decision. Tax consequences, you know, IRA investing versus 401k, are you, are you running your own business? All of these things, we're going to have a lot of, of detail and conversation with you in understanding the strategic moves that he made. So I realize that a lot of you today are going to be saying, oh yeah, but this, and you could, we're, we do probably more, well, for sure, we do more note investing training for all the IRA administration companies than any than all of the other note training companies combined. Okay, and we do that because we do understand all of the nitty gritty, and and we we are practitioners. We do this a lot in our own retirement accounts. So I'm just going to say to you that I'm trying to kind of free you up a little bit today to just to kind of think creatively with us and don't get stuck on one point of I wonder about this. And we're going to have a number that you can call us at the end and, you know, kind of answer some individual questions, but um, clearly Brooks was understanding the result of every move that he made in this process. All right. Absolutely. So he's either going to get those payments or his IRA is going to get those payments once again after the 100 months, but uh, of course something else could happen is, as well, and, and that is that the people decide to sell the property, refinance the property, and therefore pay off the loan. And uh, this is fairly common today where people don't stay in their houses anymore, or don't don't maintain or keep properties for 30 years any anymore. And uh, uh, when that occurs, if that occurs, that means that there'll be an early payoff. Now there's a big upside of course for the early payoff as well because in here, the difference where these lines are going up, that's the payoff at any point in time on that yellow amortization line, which is the loan balance over time. And Brooks would get the difference between what investor blues entitlement is and the uh, full payoff of, of the note. So the difference between that blue entitlement scheduled line and the full payoff line here, that's all just pure profit for, for Brooks if it pays off early. Yeah, and, and so remember the green is his investment, mm -hmm. but he's already uh, he sold the partial, so you know you could kind of take a little bit of an eraser and just erase the green at this point because the real math here is the difference between what Brooks his partial investor is entitled to get, and his 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 investment is amortizing, right? He's earning interest, but he's but he, but so but but you have to amortize <coughs> what he's gets in the case of, oh my God, an early payoff. And that's what you see here. So this is this is an early indicator that we would teach that this is a good candidate to sell a partial. Mm -hmm. And Brooks understood that concept of an early payoff. Now, part of this transaction, Kevin, was luck. Okay? Everything up to this point is not luck. It's skill. Mm -hmm. Okay? Brooks understood he might get lucky. Right. All right. He didn't know he would get lucky, but he understood it could happen. And so something horrible happened to this deal. Because people <laughs> will ask us the question sometimes like, oh my God, what if it pays off early? Like, this is going to be bad news. Mm -hmm. So let me show you, let me show you this horrible thing 
that happened to Brooks. Yep, he had a he, he got a phone call uh, in about nine months, didn't he? Nine months after the investor bought the partial, the servicer calls and says, "Well, guess what? Old boy pays off." So now you got to figure out who gets what. So the, the white line going through the blue represents the investor's remaining entitlement. It's the unamortized portion of his investment. He's being treated very fairly. He is truly getting a 6.2% return on his investment while his money is out, as if he made a hard money loan or a, pri a private loan, right? Same math. Mm -hmm. But old Brooks, he gets the difference between the top of the blue line and the top of the orange line. And Kevin, that color coding may not be right because that ought to be green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the partial investment they got green. They got their thirty-nine thousand, uh, which is what their entitlement was. But the full payoff, you can see it on top there, sixty-one three twenty-one, which puts twenty-two thousand two hundred eighty-eight dollars into Russ or uh, Brooks's. Uh, IRA, and of course, when he does decide to, to take that out and as part of retirement, it's all going to be tax free. Yeah, pretty cool deal, huh? That's crazy. Brooks won. Uh, so our uh, our high end uh, membership students uh, during uh, Node Expo is an annual event. It'll be uh, uh, first weekend in November. Uh, it'll be in it'll be in Dallas this year. We had about six hundred people last year at Node Expo. So we have a kind of a pre-day with our high-end folks, and um, so we the executive team selects down to kind of a list of candidates that we want to present. So students right. will present their ideas. Kevin, you do a lot of work cleaning it up and how it like flows, like you've done such a beautiful job here, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of help them with some of the presentation style, but they've got to go provide the numbers and give some backstory and stuff. Sure. So Brooks did that along with many other students. And then we took some finalists and then we put it out to our, our high end members and they voted and they voted Brooks, the, the performing note case study of the year. And he was first. He, and that's what we said when we invite you to this webinar. What does an award-winning note purchase look like? And it really, really is. Yeah, and it's not just the money he made, but it's the way he put this all together and understanding what we like to call architecting the deal. You know, he identified all the things about this. He identified that it was a, a good partial candidate, identified it was a good early payoff of a potential candidate, had the investor set, had the, the, the vendor in place for, for all of the servicing, and just did everything right. But you're right, you never know when you're going to get that, that call and just say an early payoff. So this one just so happened to be nine months after the investor got in and, and gee I wonder if that investor is going to want to do another one with Brooks I'm just just guessing <laughs> and Brooks, yeah and Brooks said that it's absolutely that he got the 39,000 and the first thing he said was okay how can you help me redeploy this money again yeah exactly uh, he wasn't upset he just said go help me go find the next deal and uh, Brooks uh, got on stage in front of Node Expo and we presented him a, a nice plaque and actually he got a a prize, a check, <laughs> and uh, and so he got to tell a little bit of his story. And Kevin, you're really good at interviewing these guys on stage and 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 doing all that stuff with them. And uh, but I remember, I think the most important thing I heard him say in this was learning to do this. It, it was a process, but after I learned to do it, I look at this transaction that you you guys are now giving me an award for it wasn't hard right it was it was a thought process and I had to develop the thought process but once I did that I look at it and think it's not it's not difficult this is this is this is not a difficult transaction and I would say that Kevin I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off script here just a second okay can I do that absolutely what if Brooks didn't buy that note what if Brooks owned that property and he had forty-two thousand dollars invested in the property, and he owner financed it for somebody. Mm -hmm. What if his cost in the property 
was that same forty-two thousand. In other words, Brooks brought somebody bought somebody else's deal, right? He bought somebody else's seller finance note, right? But what if Brooks went and made his own owner finance note and did the exact same scenario, sold a partial, recouped his investment, owned the back payments with with you know really no money invested? And so so this is the this is the thing that there's a lot of interchangeable things that somebody learns in this process is that that's why you know like somebody will bring a deal to us and say and then we're like okay you know we have sort of a candidate level like is this a note deal is there a note possibility here and once you kind of get and see those examples of what that looks like it changes a real estate investors mind forever now in Brooks's case once again he bought somebody else's deal which a lot, most of our students do, but not all of our students. And a lot of them create their own paper and they exit them with strategies like this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, you know, again, the, the math makes sense, uh, sense on, on all of this along the way and how we do the projections and everything else. In fact, we have a summary of, of the math so everybody can get a full uh, understanding of, of how all that looked. And it starts here, right? Brooks bought the note, so that was a $42,000 investment into that note from his IRA. He collected four monthly payments. Okay? That's the seasoning of, of the note. And he was, again, working with this investor and educating, showing opportunity uh, in this investment. The investor agreed to buy 100 payments for $42,000, so that means Brooks was able to recoup his investment and really make a $2,154 profit at that point in time as well. But it got really interesting here when the investor received these nine payments, they're happy uh, as can be. And then of course the, the, the short payoff a period of time when there's a $61,321 payoff, then both the investor and Brooks obviously get their pro rata share if you will their entitlement so Brooks ended up with the 22 that's pure profit on that and 39,032 the investor gets back plus their five thousand dollars plus a good experience in a deal and that investor absolutely saying let's move on to uh, to the next one and redeploy some some capital and uh, you better believe that starts to grow right you make a, an investor happy here and that investor starts talking with somebody else you know they're out on the golf course or what have you and uh, the next thing you know Brooks it does not have any kind of shortage of people that he can sell these uh, parcels to and get involved. Correct. It was a winning deal, and uh, and and that's what that's what this business is about. Is like how do you grow, how do you grow your business, mm -hmm. um, and and exploit, you know, different components of the business. Kevin, you said something earlier. I wanted to touch back on again. And that was, it was this question that we frequently will, will ask a, a live audience. And we say, if you could do a business and it's so profitable that you could make all the living you need to make out of that business in nine months out of the year, would you be willing to take three months out of the year and, and bet on your future? And that's not just for a guy, that, Kevin, that's our age, right, or Brooks's age. It's It's... This is a millennial question. I mean, my kids do have self-directed retirement accounts, and I would tell you what you, what you parents will find interesting is my kids love to explain to their buddies how they have a retirement account that is now already become worth a lot of money, and and, and they're all in their twenties. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is a. Uh, this is how people get interested in the business, and, and I've, I'm surprised how interested my kids have become in the business uh, because I would think that, you know, I know that retirement seems so far away to them they can't think about it, but, they, but, but showing them, you know, laying out deals like this and them understanding it, it becomes interesting. So you'll see a lot of times when, uh, you know, the parent comes to a class, They'll, become, they'll bring their young but grown kids. Now, sometimes they're in high school, but, some, but a lot of times they're college or out of college. And that become, as it's become a pattern in note school, and Kevin, I think one of the reasons it's become a pattern in note school is because we've had so many successful lineages of people that are now gotten their kids involved and their, even their grandkids and all that kind of stuff because it's hard to deny this math you're looking at. 
Yeah, exactly. And as you always said, there's really three components on on this. And uh, you know, to get these kind of profit margins, I know some people look at that and know that just crazy returns. But as you always say, we do have extraordinary examples because we do teach at such a a high level. And when you are educated properly and you know how to do these techniques, it's like Brooks said, it wasn't difficult, but he did have to have the understanding and all of that. And it takes some knowledge, it takes desire and, and time. And I, I know you're very descriptive about this and it's something that you know, you've identified in teaching all these years and, and, and creating Note School. And um, tell us about what, what this means to everybody. Well, I, I think... I think there always is three things for people to pursue some strategy, some investment strategy, some business strategy, whatever that is for you, right? Whatever the note business or real estate investing or whatever your your uh, game is, mm -hmm. there's really three things. There's knowledge on the subject, there's desire to go do it, and there's time to go implement it, right? And and if it and and you got to check yes in all three of those blanks, Kevin, to to find success. Mm -hmm. So what we find overwhelmingly is people see an, a case study like we've just shown you. Mm -hmm. Well, you pretty much we're gonna be. Let's be fair about it. If you if this doesn't if you wouldn't like to be Brooks in that deal, <laughs> it is a whole other issue. Okay, I got it. But but trust me, most people have a desire to be able to do some things. Okay, yeah. what they're worried about, and and rightfully so, Kevin, it isn't. This isn't a phantom thing. It's a real thing. They're worried about knowledge. Can they do it? And secondly, do they have time to do it? Right. And I think in in as note school progresses, I think we place honestly an equal emphasis on knowledge and time management of how to scale it and how to do it efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, Brooks found this note on Notes Direct, which is a, a family entity that we own that offers assets. So he went to Notes Direct. Now he doesn't pay the same price as the general public and he gets access to it at a different time because he's a real high level with us. and. Uh, but that's how he found it. He didn't go out. He didn't run an ad in the paper, or he didn't go do direct mail to buy that note. He bought it off a website. Right. It was an asset that we actually owned. Mm -hmm. We thought it was a good deal, and we bought it. Mm -hmm. So if yep. I know it's going to pay off so early, I don't know that I would have sold it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what that's what you don't know, right? When that when that's going to pay off, and uh, but again, he was structured in that deal. Look, he could have paid off in nine months, twelve months whatever, 18 months, it wouldn't have mattered. It would have been all good either way because he did it uh, the right way and he was uh, structured in the deal uh, the right way and he became his own bank and that's really what we uh, teach people to do. You know, it's the, the first national bank and the, we, we want to make it the first national bank of you. You uh, 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 structure these things and the, the income comes to you. It's all serviced and, and uh, that's really what this business ultimately becomes. Right. You know, and it's funny when we we're accustomed to saying this and thinking this way all the time. But but Kevin, you know that when we're out in the public speaking and live gigs all the time, we get to go see their face. You know, um, and when you say that, we're going to teach you to be the bank and teach you how to run your own little retirement account like a bank. Like people, like people, like they're all in. They want. They like that idea. I want that. They just don't know what that is yet. And so obviously that's. Uh, you know, that's where we progress and you know talk to them and say well here's some progression steps that you could take so Kevin let's talk about what some progression steps that people might want to take with us here yeah absolutely we have our uh, power of paper course which is a full three-day power packed uh, information packed training on really all aspects of the note business it's from the performing side the non-performing side re-performing side seller financing side and uh, those seats do fill up quick and and um, we have a way that you can reserve seats and you can look on our line I've got the website on the lower left there you can look online to see when these classes might be coming to your area or heck jump on a plane like a lot of people did last week where we were in Tampa we had people from 
from all over the United States fly down to Tampa, Florida. So we have classes on a regular basis and uh, you can reserve and talk with us too because a lot of people want more information I, I think about the, uh, the training before they might I want to attend so we have that number set up for you as well there that's circled in uh, red that people can recommend and, and go to the website as well. Yeah we'll, we'll have, we'll have uh, classes we, we're kind of across the country but Kevin said I know Kevin the last class you you were in Florida and you had somebody from Hawaii and you had somebody from uh, Oregon and I, I I know I just I just read the list and you had all you have these people from all over the country and you're saying well you know let, let me let me say this I tell people you know if 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 you want to start implementing what the timing of this business and the timing of this business is because there's a lot of inventory of notes like Brooks's deal okay and we spend an excessive energy and expense to go find those deals and buy them. We buy them predominantly in bulk. We buy them the way Brooks couldn't have bought them because we bought uh, a couple of hundred at a time, sometimes right. more than that. And and so then we then we'll put them on the marketplace through this Notes Direct and do it. And people think, well, I you know all I need is just the website. No, the website is awesome. But what you need is to know what Brooks knew how to do, how to go carve the deal up, how to attract an investor, how to go, how to go, I don't want to say manipulate the deal, but how, but how to go be that architect. That's what, that's what you really need. I get inventory is cool, but knowing what to do with the inventory. Listen, Kevin, you and I can go to the sports store today and buy a baseball, okay? That don't mean we can throw it 100 miles an hour, <laughs> right? Right. And and so uh, so so call us if you want to call us. Obviously, go to the website. You know, whatever. And if if it's not a fit for you, don't do it. We we're we're wanting to make sure that you are a fit for us. And then so so call us because once again we there's some people. If we we get a sense of kind of where you're at in the scale of your knowledge and experience, then we can position things that are going to fit you. Uh, and there's some cool stuff that we'll. We'll do a, a bonus thing and give you two on the on the classes, and uh, there's some home study courses that are some things that we might can uh, uh, include with you. Probably would if you called us and acted on it, um, and uh, and and so we'll throw in some things that are more than just the three day class. But that magic in the three day class is Kevin. We take all of these deals like Brooks's, uh -huh. and we pull them up. And then we start changing things, right? Well, this is what happened. But what if we did it this way? Or what if you did it this way? What if Brooks didn't buy the note for 42 and he had to pay 50? Would it have worked? And how would it work? How, how would the math have worked then and repositioned it? And what if Brooks hadn't have bought a note, but he sold a property and created his own note? And we'll do all of these different combinations. And what you, what's so fun about it is, is like you just, that they, you just see them at the end of the day. They're just about to jump out of their skin. It is. I, we've done it a lot over the last many years. Kevin Shortell and I have done it a lot, and I've never gotten tired of seeing that. Just they just light up. I mean, they're just like, oh my gosh, I I, I had no idea. And so that's the class lets us go, but get creative with you, right? It, it's it's builds enough background, has enough time that we can then go to be creative. So we'd love to see you. Um, and uh, these are not gigantic classes. So as Kevin said, there's a, there's a limit on seats in these classes. And um, anyway, if, it's, uh, if, 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 if you like the Brooks deal, this is, this is a good way to start is to call us and let's figure out the next level we could progress with you. Mr. Shortail, you're pretty handy drawing up these case studies. <laughs> well, it's one of my favorite things to do. I mean, nothing like sharing the uh, success that our students have done with with other people. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, same thing with the training. Just love going out there and and being face to face with people and and showing them what this is all about. So uh, it's 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 been great. All right. So in the red there, you see Kevin circle the number eight 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 nine eight zero nine two four zero. Look, this ain't this is a no pressure deal. So if you if if you want to just call and and have a conversation with us and see if some, some of this stuff's a fit or what, what next steps might look like. Just just feel like it. it's the, what you see of Note School today, this is what you can expect always of us. 
And uh, if, if you don't need to have a conversation, you just want to go to the website, then you see that in the bottom left there. It's the forward slash noteschool.com forward slash three day classes. And the reason it says POP is it's power of paper. So that's our little acronym for it. So you're going to go to the POP class. All right, Mr. Shortail, you're awesome, dude. All right. Well, thank you, Eddie, and thank you all for uh, attending this and uh, other webinars, and I uh, look forward to meeting you as well. Bye thank now. You.